We have some huge NHL signings to talk about today, including Darnell Nurse, Vince Dunn, and Adam Pellick, and more. All that coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As you can see, we're still recording here on location. Today we're live from downtown Halifax, Nova Scotia. Trying to get a bit more of a scenic view here. Uh, still at the hotel, but of course, at least you can get a glimpse here of the Halifax Harbor here behind me. I hope you're enjoying the scenery. Hope everything's going well for you, but some things are going really well for a few NHL players today. Getting some massive NHL contracts. Let's start with the biggest one of the day. News just broke here a short time ago that Darnell Nurse and the Oilers have agreed on a massive eight-year contract at $9.25 million average annual value. That's that's a lot of money. It's up to be $74 million over eight years. That is a ton of cash for their top defenseman in Darnell Nurse. I mean, he's slowly been becoming a huge part of their team. 26 years old now. He logs a ton of minutes on that back end for the Edmonton Oilers. But I do think it's fair to say this is a bit of an overpayment. Uh, 9.25 million puts them right up there with guys like Seth Jones and uh, Dougie Hamilton, and you know you could almost make an argument that those contracts really were fueled this because statistically speaking, especially Jones and Hamilton here, Hamilton more specifically, they're fairly comparable stat-wise, Hamilton and Nurse. Um, but you know you look around some young dynamic defensemen around the league like McCarr and Adam Fox and Quinn Hughes is going to be getting that contract soon too. And I know it's a different situation because you're paying for UFA years versus RFA years. But, you know, that, that's a lot of money for those guys. Thankfully, Nurse is still young. He's still getting better. I don't think he's quite peaked yet. Like I said, we've seen him play a critical role in a huge amount of minutes. Uh, last year, he put up 36 points in 56 games. It puts him on pace to be around in the low 50s for point totals on a full 82-game schedule. He's also been quite durable for them, too, uh, which is good. So there's, there's a lot to like about Darnell Nurse's game. I honestly thought he might be coming in closer to that seven and a half to eight million dollar range on a longer term deal myself. That's where I kind of had him pegged at most, maybe like an eight times eight. That's what I thought he would probably end up getting. But I mean, there's been rumblings from Elliot Friedman for a couple of weeks now that the nurse contract was going to be nine or nine plus. And like I said, the other contracts that we've seen signed, guys like Hamilton and Jones, were I'm sure used as comparables here. When you look at the amount of minutes that they play and the role they play in the team and all that, similar offensive statistics too, like not drastically different. That certainly it was a big part of that. I mean, Hamilton was a, you know obviously played a, a little a lot of minutes for Carolina, put up you know slightly better offensive stats, but it wasn't a huge gap between the two. So I don't know. I mean, that's a lot of money to have tied up between Nurse and your top two forwards with Drysaddle and McDavid. Um, it was a cap only likely going up. By one million next year, and to see some small increases of a million for the next, three, you know, probably four or five years after that, that is a lot of money uh, tied up in three players for Edmonton. Uh, like I said, I know he's a huge part of their team, but I don't know. That's that's a big contract. We'll see what happens, but I hope it works out for them. I think. Now moving on to another contract that I think is really fair is the Islanders inking Adam Pellick to an eight-year deal as well, but he gets five point seven five million. Now Adam Pellick is. Proven to be a real top-pair guy. Probably fair to say, I think, the guy in the Islanders that have probably improved the most since uh, Barry Trotz took over as head coach. Uh, real solid, top-pair, uh, defensive-style defenseman. You're not going to get you know big offensive numbers out of Adam Pellick, but he and Ryan Pollock make up one of the top, probably arguably one of the most, if not the most, underrated uh, D-pair in the NHL. Uh, they do fly under the radar a little bit, but as we've seen in the last couple of playoffs with them making some deep runs, I think that's starting to become a little bit more apparent and starting to get a little bit more attention on a national stage, per se, uh, with the, the playoff performances. But, you know, Pelic at 575 for eight years is huge. And, like, the reason we're seeing more of these eight year deals is to keep the AAV lower. I mean, uh, the, uh, you know, these guys would have been getting more money on shorter term deals and it's just you know if the teams can lock them up now or they're gonna have you know a flat or near flat cap for an extended time with only minor increases that will help them really project and predict their spending for the next you know large part of that contract which will be extremely helpful uh, both these guys here in the case of Nurse and Pelic are both 26 years old both have good size both play a lot of minutes it's a little bit different style Nurse does give you more offense but Pelic obviously gets a little bit more of a you know, closer to a team-friendly contract. Based on the fact you don't get a ton of offense out of Pelic, it's I think it's good value. I don't think it's an overpayment, but that's the reason why he's you know not going to be your kind of guy making seven, eight, nine million dollars 
because you don't get the offense to go with it. Now, Vince Dunn, another you know fairly dynamic offensive defenseman, not nearly to the level of uh, you know achievement yet of these two guys, but he gets a two-year deal from the Kraken. Of course, he was claimed in the expansion draft from the St. Louis Blues, and his contract ends up being four million dollars per year. Now, I do wonder if they're still going to keep him or not. The Kraken are a team that. They need to shed players, and I don't know when they're going to do it. Maybe there's just not a big market for it, and they've been trying. I'm not really sure. But they get another guy under under contract here. We've seen some other ones here in recent days, but I think that's a pretty good deal for a guy like Dunn. Obviously, top four minutes is what he's looking for, which is why he was likely getting dealt out of St. Louis if he wasn't claimed an expansion. But at the end of the day, we'll have to see what happens here. I know a team like the Bruins, for example, uh, had been rumored to be looking at him before, but we'll see if he ends up actually playing in St. Louis or not. They, and they also signed another forward, veteran forward Marcus Johansson. It's a one-year deal at $1.5 million. Uh, he can play center. He's a much better winger, though, in my opinion. So we know that they're still looking for centers in Seattle. I'm not sure exactly where he'll fit with them, but it's a short-term deal, low risk. A uh, good veteran guy to bring around for them. So from the team's perspective, not much risk at all. So I like that. Uh, veteran guy, been around the league a long time, just not sure exactly where we're going to slot him in the lineup um, because there's so many bodies there. Like I said, it's just really hard to predict who's going to be your you know, your top nine forwards, basically, with the Kraken and your top six D. I mean, we know some of those spots, but it's just hard to say exactly where everybody is uh, going to fit there in those regards. The LA Kings have signed young defenseman Kale Clegg. He gets a one-year deal at 761000 Of course, I thought maybe he could be picked in the expansion draft too, but he was overlooked for... Another option in L.A. and another young D who's going to continue to battle for spots and could be a part of this team's future. One of the many young prospects in that deep pool of, of uh, younger players who's you know starting to hit that age now where you need to see more development to become a regular NHL player. So this is going to be a pivotal year for Clegg uh, in becoming a full-time NHLer if he's going to be able to accomplish that. The Chicago Blackhawks have come to terms with forward Brandon Hagel. Hagel gets a three-year deal at $1.5 million. I mean, that's a... Again, another fairly good contract. 1.5 is not a lot of money, especially for a younger player still developing. Uh, you know, at the end of the season, he went over and had a chance to play with the uh, gold medal winning team candidate at the World Championships. I had a good showing there. I think that's some good confidence for him. Um, and obviously, with all the moves they made in Chicago this offseason, you have to think they're going to be a better, more competitive team next year. So we'll see what to expect out of Hangel. I know in uh, celebration of this, he was also doing a big giveaway of bagels. Uh, in the Chicago area, he had a gift card for Dunkin' Donuts that he was doing a big giveaway with local fans there, so it's always good to see. I know it's not a huge deal, but just nice to see hockey players giving back to the community and being a good uh, good sport that way, so nice to see him uh, doing that. Calgary Flames have signed a pair of players on one-year, two-way deals, and that's Matthew Phillips and Luke Phillips. They're both 750 k contracts at the NHL levels. It's about two-way deals just for this coming season. And the Arizona Coyotes has uh, made an announcement as well. They have a signing and a hiring of note here. Uh, they signed a newly acquired Connor Timmins, who they got from the Avalanche after trading Darcy Kemper uh, to them earlier uh, in the offseason here. Uh, right around the time of free ages, even the goalies are going like hotcakes. We saw that come in late after the Avalanche lost Philip Grubauer to Seattle. Timmins gets a two-year deal at 850000 So that could be a good deal for him. I mean, to me, he's a fairly underrated right-shot defenseman prospect that could get a bigger role in Arizona, and it could be a huge part of their future. We'll have to see. But the other bigger news in Arizona today was that they've also hired Larry Plow as a senior advisor to general manager Bill Armstrong. Now, Larry Plow has been around the game of hockey for a really long time. Most recently, I've worked with the St. Louis Blues. No big shocker there. That's where obviously where Bill Armstrong came from as well. He was with the Blues in a similar type of role uh, for in other roles too. Uh, his titles changed a few times over the years, but he was there, I believe it was 23 or 24 years that he worked for the St. Louis Blues organization. So certainly a big part of that uh, organization for a long time. So he's worn a lot of hats and the executive management roles uh, in hockey over the years. Uh, so that would be a great you know, mentor, advisor, guy to have around for Bill Armstrong, who's still a relatively new general manager with the Arizona Coyotes. Of course, they got a new head coach and Andre Turney as well. So there's still a lot of people down there kind of learning their role and learning the ropes here as they've made steps and promotions forward to advance themselves. So having a real experienced guy like Plo around will be an absolutely uh, terrific addition, I think, for that organization. So I know there's been some rumblings. I know uh, Steve Valicat uh, had put on Twitter earlier that he thought there could be an Eichel deal maybe in the works. And he obviously he's, you know, a Ranger guy. So, you know, referencing the Rangers um, sniffing around Eichel, 
I don't know what intel he has that the rest of us are waiting to find out more about. Maybe it's just a gut feeling. Maybe it wasn't really a lot of, you know, actual intel that he was given. I don't know where the, what he knows because he didn't really, it was kind of one of those cryptic tweaks saying that his spidey senses were um, <laughs> thinking an Eichel deal was, was close or something. I can't remember his exact wording. But either, anyway, so we'll see if anything comes from that or not. Uh, but I know there's going to be lots of people talking here. Uh, also, when it comes to Jack Eichel, but another quick thing as well, uh, there is a Twitter account, and I believe it's also verified. And there was no reference to the Sabres on this account. And uh, a lot of people were wondering what Eichel was doing with this. And it's turned out that it's confirmed to be a fake. Even though Twitter verified it, it's not the real Jack Eichel. So if you see any information on Twitter regarding that, thinking that he's not you know, connected to Buffalo and all that kind of stuff, um, or if they do put out anything that, you know, um, makes it look like it's coming from him, then you know it's not legit. So just ignore that. I would imagine Twitter won't be too long taking that account down now that it's made its way and, you know, caught wind of the other right people here. So we'll see what happens on that front. So that's all your news for now. Let me know your thoughts on these contracts down in the comments section. We can discuss that further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We will keep you up to date with all the latest news and rumors on all 32 NHL teams. Come to you again live from Halifax, Nova Scotia. I will catch you next time. Oh,